Hey guys, Matt Dieterich here. Thanks for joining me on another astrophotography video here. Today's pretty awesome because we're going to be putting together an imaging train setup, including SBIG's new Aluma 4040 CMOS sensor. This is just a beautiful camera. First time I've had a chance to work with it, so I'm excited to see how the performance is. What we're going to do is we have a seven position filter wheel here that we need to install the 50 millimeter filters inside first. And then what we need to do is we need to attach the filter wheel with their SBIG off-axis guider, another great setup for astrophotography. And we're gonna wrap it up by installing SBIG's AOX adaptive optics unit to cap off a awesome astrophotography setup beautiful set of equipment and when we work with the filter wheel to start out with always make sure that you use a handy dandy pair of gloves because we're going to be working with very sensitive glass and we don't want that oil to get on to the filters and cause any damage to the filters over time so without further ado guys let's jump into it and get the filters installed okay so before we can install the filters what we need to do is open up the front plate and then we will eventually remove this adapter plate off the front of the SBIG Aluma 4040. So there are six bolts right on the outside of the filter wheel so we're going to go ahead and remove those bolts. Okay now we have the six bolts removed we can lift off this plate. This is the side of the plate that the guider is going to attach to so we can set it aside and we need to take out the carousel where the filters are going to be installed. So with the SBIG 7 position filter wheel, they have a small optical sensor here that is tightened down with two Phillips screws. So we need to use our Phillips screwdriver and go ahead and gently remove that. Just enough that we back it out of the way because that optical sensor, if damaged, is not going to be able to read and rotate the filter wheel. Okay, so for that small optical sensor, we have the two Phillips screws out, and I've gently taken the sensor and I've set it to the side in a safe location where it's not gonna get damaged. Next, I'll set those two screws aside just so I don't lose them. Next up, let's go ahead and get our gloves on before we start handling the filter wheel. And we're gonna take out all the screws that are on the filter wheel, and we're gonna take out the three inside hex key bolts just to get those out so we can pop out the filter wheel. So now these three bolts have been removed. The filter wheel itself can be removed, but we're gonna go ahead and loosen up the Phillips bolts so those can be removed and take the faceplate off of the filter wheel. Okay, so we're ready to remove the carousel from the filter wheel housing. All the screws have been removed. The nine Phillips heads have been removed and then the three hex bolts have been removed. Optical sensor is safely out of the way. So all we need to do is gently lift this up. And now the carousel is safely out. Be careful because of course this is now in two pieces because this is how the filters get secured into the housing. So we can set that aside. Okay, so you will see on the very edges, tough to see in the video, but on the very edges of the filter wheel carousel, there are numbers, number one through seven. So make sure, depending on the order you want your filters to be in, make sure you know what numbers that you put down and which filters you put into those slots. So in my scenario, L, R, G, and B, I'm gonna start with number one being luminance, working my way all the way down to the blue filter. So blue will be number four, and then I'll put in the narrowband filters. We have a hydrogen alpha, we have a sulfur, and then we have an oxygen. So I'm gonna put those filters in last. The sulfur will be number seven, and then oxygen will be number eight. That'll leave hydrogen alpha as number six. Okay, so next up, we are ready to remove the adapter that SBIG supplied on the front of the Aluma 4040. We're going to remove that, and then we're going to attach the back plate of the filter wheel.
Okay, now to get the Aluma 4040 attached to this seven position filter wheel, we need to remove these four bolts that are on the faceplate, and then we will reuse those bolts and secure the filter wheel to the faceplate of the camera. Okay, now that we have the filter wheel carousel out of the filter wheel housing, we have removed the smaller four black hex key bolts. We're gonna take the four longer hex key bolts that SBIG has supplied with us, and we're gonna take the filter wheel faceplate, and we're gonna attach it to the actual faceplate of the SBIG Aluma camera. Okay, so we have the back plate of the filter wheel now attached to the face plate of the CMOS camera from SBIG. So now we're ready to work on getting the filters unboxed, put into the carousel, and then we'll reinstall the filter wheel into the housing. Okay, so just to confirm and make sure that we're all on the same page, you could have installed this plate 180 degrees, but what would have happened if we did was this RS-232 cable would have been on the wrong side of the camera body, which here is the jack. So we know that the filter wheel cable needs to be on the closest side to the port for the camera. So once we're back finished up with this, it'll be connected right here. Okay, we're ready to put in the filters. Here is the luminance. It's gonna go in the number one slot. I'm gonna do LRGB from number one to four. And then I'm gonna do number five to seven with hydrogen alpha, sulfur two, and oxygen three. I love the hydrogen alpha filters in Narrowband in general because look, you literally can't even see through them. It blocks so much light and that allows just the very tight wavelengths of hydrogen alpha to pass. It cuts right through light pollution and a lot of the glow from the moon. Okay, all seven filters are now inside the carousel. We're gonna take the cover, replace it, and then put the nine screws back in and then we'll put the three hex bolts back in and reinsert this into the filter wheel housing. Okay, so now we have a completely assembled carousel with our color filters. Now we're ready to get this back installed. Okay, the carousel has been remounted. Now we're gonna reattach the optical sensor gently and put back in the two Phillips screws. Alrighty, cool, so we have the filter wheel carousel back installed in the filter wheel housing. It's attached to the beautiful SBIG 4040 Aluma series CMOS sensor camera. This is great, so now we need to just recover it back up and then we're gonna attach the next couple of accessories. We have the guider and then we have the beautiful adaptive optics unit. Okay, now that we have the filter wheel attached to the body of the camera, next up, we need to get the guider and adaptive optics unit installed. And the way to do this is we need to take the rear plate off the adaptive optics unit, and then we're gonna put that onto the face plate of this SBIG off-axis guider unit. And we're gonna use these through bolts, put it through and then attach it onto the back of the filter wheel. So let's go ahead, get the AO unit opened up, get the back plate off, and get working on that. So the four bolts have been loosened on the AO unit, and this is gonna separate into two pieces. One portion has the electronic with the bolt, so I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna take the foam out. Okay, we have the back plate of the AO unit off. I'll take your off-axis guider, make sure the mirror is facing you because the incoming light will come down, bounce off the mirror into the guider unit. Take that back plate and put it on front. 
Take one of your bolts, put it through the hole. And now we're gonna take this assembly and mount it onto the filter wheel. All right, last but not least, let's go ahead and get the AO unit back on and we're gonna just secure it to the outside bolts here with the bolts that are on the AO unit. Okay, so we have the AO unit here ready to secure onto the back plate of the AO adapter. Well, last but not least guys, we have a plane wave adapter to take the S-Big unit to our plane wave secure fit and this has some threads inside. So basically one of our plane wave threaded adapters is gonna mate to this and then that'll attach onto the telescope. Just four bolts right in front of the AO unit and then we're done for now. Alrighty folks, well here it is, a pretty monstrous imaging train. You have, starting from the telescope end, S-Big Adaptive Optics Unit, S-Big's Off-Axis Guider, S-Big's 7 position 50 millimeter square filter wheel, and then the latest, the greatest, the newest, Aluma 4040, it's a CMOS sensor. Really excited and stoked to get this thing on sky. But that's how you put it together, and it's rigged up, ready to go, and get attached to a plane wave telescope. Hope you guys learned a little bit of something. As always, reach out. Don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching, guys. Clear skies.